coming. I'm going to be talking about actions and views in the Django admin. Uh, mostly, uh, this is a lot of this is uh, we're talking about some easy ways to customize it to get people some quick information. To the uh, the joke is to save you a click. Uh, this is saving our admin users a click. So uh, especially. Uh, you know, we're going to start talk, talking with like, a lot of tips and tricks and libraries. It might be an overload at first. It's going to kind of go from sort of beginner level, and then we're going to kind of uh, abstract it out and talk a little more abstract at the end. Uh, but the point is that there's a lot of ways to do this, to do some of the things that we need to do with the admin. Uh, there are a lot of libraries that kind of overlap and conflict that are all kind of on the same page. Uh, so the conclusion isn't necessarily, it's part of it is to give you guys some tools and ideas and tricks. Uh, but part of it is also to, uh, to sort of suggest other ways to think about the admin more holistically and, and provide a framework for it. Um, and uh, also, I thought this talk was 45 minutes, so that's another reason it's going to be overload, because I'm going to be going a little faster than I expected. Um, a lot of this is, uh, I've learned a lot of this by doing work at the Texas Tribune. I've been there for about two years. The Texas Tribune uh, is based in Austin. We're a nonprofit, nonpartisan, all digital uh, news organization. Uh, we, uh, we focus on Texas politics and policy. Uh, we have a combination of news, uh, data, and events. Uh, we also have uh, two, two of my colleagues, Annie and Ty, are also here who focus on these things as well. We'd love to talk to you more. But the idea is basically we have a lot of uh, users. Our CMS users are very busy, strapped for time. They need to publish breaking news very fast. But then we also do a lot of investigative features and longer stories where we want well-structured data where we can uh, make sure that it gets presented well all the time and on every platform that we're on. So it's a tough balance, and um, we, uh, we do it all with Django. It's all pretty much vanilla Django right now. We're moving, uh, looking at uh, moving towards a, a CMS framework like Django CMS. Uh, but at the moment, yeah, it's all pretty much vanilla. So we have uh, found a lot of uh, little tips and hacks and things that you can do in, the, in that vanilla Django admin to, to make it really fast and easy for users to publish stories. Uh, a little bit about my background. I've been at the Tribune for two years. Uh, before that, uh, I was in a, a program called Comparative Media Studies at MIT, working in the Hyper Studios Digital Humanities Lab. And before that, I was uh, working at a startup, uh, news curation startup called Wiser. Uh, I was battling the Django admin there as well. But I feel like I've really stretched its limits in the last couple of years at the Tribune. We found that, especially when I first started with Django, when I was working with it, I really quickly wanted to add uh, a couple of easy buttons here and there, Qu quick actions, quick views, just stu uh, little stuff that shouldn't be that hard. And every time it, I had a sad time, it was, and it, it ended up with a lot of coupled files, a lot of coupled code. It just never felt right to me. I struggled with it a lot. Um, but at the Tribune, we recently completed an admin redesign uh, a little bit uh, on just you know reskinning of our admin, and we, I learned a lot. It gave us a, an opportunity to re-architect uh, some of the ways that we're doing some of the admin customizations. So if you think of the admin, the Django admin is a series of windows that are increasingly getting into a kernel of information you need. You start with uh, the whole dashboard site, you know, the whole site. Then you move into a, a list view, and then you move into a detail view, and then you move into inlines inside of that. I'm going to kind of use that, uh, that zooming in as a framework for uh, some of the tricks I'm going to talk about in this talk. Um, then at the end, I'm going to try to wrap it all up into a bow and talk about wh why, uh, why they all have these similar patterns that we can learn from. So yeah, again, the, part of the intention is, not intention, but it might overwhelm. Uh, and it will be a lot, but hopefully it'll make some sense at the end. I'm throwing a lot against the wall. I want to see what sticks. Uh, we're going to be using an example site. It's called NewsHound. It's a blog by dogs, for dogs, and about dogs. Um, and uh, it also has a database of breeds, dog breeds, uh, which were scraped from the American Kennel Club the other day. Um, so if you can follow along at GitHub, github.com slash mail backwards slash newshound. There are going to be examples there of everything I'm about to show, so hopefully it won't be quite as overwhelming. Uh, and I apologize in advance. They're extremely contrived examples. I ran out of ideas for how to talk about dogs. Um, <laughs> and it, uh, the data model that we have in Newshound uh, is basically we have, we have uh, blog posts, and these have uh, the, a post might be about, uh, might be about individual dogs uh, that you're talking about. Each of these dogs can be part of multiple breeds, and that's, that's a custom through model because a dog could be 25% Schnauzer and 75% Chihuahua. Uh, and, then, uh, and then each breed is part of a gr breed group. So for instance, a toy, uh, the toy group or the herding dog group or the terrier group. Again, this is really contrived, but uh, got to start somewhere. So 
Uh, really quickly, I'm going to start with the admin site and landing page. A quick thing that you can do here to make your, your initial dashboard uh, a little friendlier is uh, to have a custom admin site on, on, your, uh, on your Django admin. Basically, uh, this, this lets you, it has a couple advantages. First of all, you can customize your site header. So now you'll see over here, if I can get my, yeah, over here. See, it says News Hound up here at the top rather than just a Django administration. Um, and then it also uh, allows you to do, cu do custom login templates. So here I made a custom login and I just added a forgot your password option down here, which is something that we have on our, on our CMS. So it's really handy to have this uh, custom admin site to make really easy, quick changes. And um, it, I also personally like that it puts all of the admin site logic into one module so you don't have these auto discovers going on all over and uh, across different apps. You have a centralized place where all of your admin site logic lives. Uh, moving into the change list views, this is probably the bulk of it. That we have a lot of uh, a lot of tricks up our sleeve here. Uh, here's a basic change list view uh, with uh, just the the, the uh, blog post. Uh, you'll see there's one article that's been published and uh, it has a great headline. The uh, doesn't give us very much information though. There's uh, there aren't a lot of columns here. It's not uh, not much you can do. Uh, so the first thing you can do is add list display to your uh, to your change list. Uh, this lets you add any other columns you want. So here you get a second column. It's pretty straightforward. Most people know this one. Uh, but if you take it, let's display a, a step further, you can do a few other things. So first of all, uh, you can add extra fields that aren't actually on your model and then define them in the admin and uh, tell them, you know, say, say what you want the content of the, uh, the column to be. So in this case, uh, we're just listing all the dogs that, are, uh, that have been sort of tagged or associated with this blog post. If you do this, don't forget to select related or pre prefetch your related model because otherwise uh, it will get heavy and slow very fast. The, uh, the other thing I'll talk about with list display, one thing we use a lot is to combine it with format, uh, Django's format HTML. This lets us put any arbitrary HTML into those columns. So you, don't, you, uh, you can kind of, in this case, for instance, what we're doing um, is we're for each dog, we're, putting, we're making a little link, hyperlink, to the dog's uh, absolute URL. And the, uh, it manifests over here. It's hard to see, kind of hard to see, but uh, you, can, you just get this list, nicely formatted list of names, and then you have a link out to go see those uh, names. The other thing I'll point out here is this is just an HTML entity for a, an arrow. Uh, it, I, I feel like that's a really easy way to do visual communication rather than overloading somebody with walls of text or a bunch of hyperlinks. Just put little symbols in there. It's just text. It's really easy to do, and um, and it makes makes it visually cleaner. Um, I'm cheating a little here. I'm going to talk about the detail view really quickly, and then go back to the change list view. But another way that you can use format HTML is with read-only fields, uh, and read-only fields very similarly. Uh, if you set, uh, for in this case, it's a photo preview. Uh, this then you put if you put it in your fields it'll show up in the detail view and you can again put any HTML you want in here so in this case you're getting a preview of this dog this dog breed I can't read it but uh, it's a cute dog it gets into your admin who wouldn't like that uh, back to the list view another handy trick is list editable uh, this one uh, here you'll see uh, it turns this headline field into an open text field that you can just edit. Uh, from the list view, so if you had 100 of them here, you can edit all 100 at once, and then go click the Save button at the bottom, and, uh, and you're, you're all set. We find that this one, since it adds another button, and it adds a whole bunch of uh, form fields, uh, it's not very friendly to users. I think it stresses people out when they see it. But uh, we actually, we use it, it's particularly handy for cleanup sprints, which is what we found. So for instance, uh, at the Texas Tribune, we have a lot of tag data, uh, and some of it's very messy. So one time, uh, there, there was one sprint where we decided we're going to clean up our tags. And so for those, I made a lot of fields list editable for the time that we were doing this sprint. Uh, and that was really helpful for making, you know, just getting in there really quickly, making the big alterations, and then, uh, and then saving, and then you're done. I'm moving on from uh, displays to actions. Actions uh, at their most basic level, admin actions allow you to basically check off certain items in that change list uh, in the checkboxes and then perform a function based on, on what you've checked off. Uh, in this case, this code is uh, publishing all of the checked off items that you had. It might uh, set, set them all to be published. 
one thing we started to do at the Tribune is uh, make dynamic actions based on some of the choices that are in our models. So in this case, we have a few different states for publication. You might have it in draft mode and edit mode and published mode. And here, uh, this code is basically just making an action for each of those states. Uh, and then it manifests in the end with uh, this list at the bottom of actions. You know, you can set it to draft, set it to publish, set it to edit, and it will just change based on the models. Zooming out even farther, this is really tiny code, I'm sorry, but um, even farther, uh, we've started working on admin, uh, admin mixins or action mixins. In this case, uh, what it's doing is basically defining, uh, what you can do is define an action fields attribute on your admin model, and at that point, it will add those action choices for you. So in this case, in, in this, that works for either a Boolean field or for choices. So here, for instance, we have a post admin, which is uh, setting it to either draft, edit, or published. Uh, and then down here, it's hard to read, but you also have a dog admin. Uh, dogs have a attrib Boolean attribute for whether they're good or not. And in this case, you can set the attribute to be, you can set all of these checked items to be, all of them could be good, all of them could be bad. Uh, and it's just done with this nice uh, handy mix-in so you don't have to worry about uh, replicability. Um, moving a little bit more into the libraries and packages uh, that we might talk about, uh, what if you want to add actions, for instance, for each item in your change list? You, know, you, have, your, you have your list of items and you, you just want a button next at the end of each of them to, to do something with that individual item. Uh, this is a really handy package called Django Admin Row Actions. And uh, it basically adds that column for you down here in the corner. You'll see it has, it has this drop down called Actions. You click on it. Uh, you, in this case, uh, you can either redirect to uh, the delete view for that individual object, or uh, you can make, uh, make all the dogs good, I guess, on this one. Uh, so it's usually defining a particular action or a particular URL, and then it will, uh, it will do the rest for you. Another package that we use a lot is called Django Object Actions. This was uh, developed actually at the Texas Tribune by our old colleague, Chris Chang. It does a whole lot for us. This is one thing it does. Um, basically, it lets you put, easily put change buttons in the change list without modifying your template. So you'll see down here you have this Publish All Edits button that just shows up here in the corner on this change list view. And it's really just like defining any other uh, function here. And the one key part is this change list actions part uh, that let, and that, that's really what's, uh, that's, all, that's all it takes to add a button right there, which uh, we actually found was, was harder than it should have been to do uh, sustainably. Uh, one way that we use these buttons for our models is we, we often are, uh, sync our models with external APIs. So for instance, uh, we sync with MailChimp or Eventbrite, and that, that's where we uh, host, store a lot of our data for our events. So we might put a sync button right there so that people can quickly just sync up our CMS and our, uh, our website with whatever's going on externally. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty easy place to put it. Moving, zooming further into the change views. Uh, again, with Django object actions, they have not just change list actions, they also have change actions. Uh, and these are uh, even handier, I think. The, so in this case, uh, you know, this just lets you uh, take that particular instance and use that uh, rather than uh, having it be list-wide. Uh, here we are making all the dogs good in this particular article. So this article might have mentioned a few dogs. They're all automatically good if you click this button. Uh, and also, uh, it, yeah, it maintains a lot of the admin features like message user. You can you know, you do, do a lot of the same functionality that you could do with any, any view, any admin feature. Uh, and I want to reiterate, it, redirects make it really easy to add hyperlinks, or the equivalent of hyperlinks, without adding, changing your template model. So in this case, uh, this is basically a link. It's just you're, you're going to a certain change list view. Uh, but you're doing it with actions, and that uh, just is a little bit more, uh, it moves it further into the back end and lets you sort of control it more. I also really like this handy takes instance or query set decorator that comes from Django object actions, which uh, lets you put it on both the change and the changeless view at once. So that's, uh, that's a handy feature. And a shout out to Chris if you're here. Uh, because actions are just views uh, under the hood, you can add confirm views, confirmation views, kind of like the Django delete view uh, for resources. This is kind of a combination of the two things, uh, the two sort of, the action and the, the reader or the, uh, the link. 
So in this case, just stepping through what this uh, publish edited uh, action is doing, you start with, uh, so it, it, the first thing you do is it, it, it looks for a post request. It doesn't see one, so it just renders a confirmation view. And here's the, conf uh, the confirmation view over here. It just makes sure that you, uh, that you want to delete these things. Uh, the second time around, uh, if you put, uh, all you have to do, and it's really tiny text, but all you have to do is put uh, an action value into the post data, and it will send it straight back to this view. So you can use the same view to both render the conf confirmation view and also process the confirmation when it happens. Uh, in this way, you can, you know, you get the best of both worlds, and it's all wrapped into one nice little function. Going, zooming further into inlines, uh, we have a couple other packages that we have found uh, really handy here. This is sort of uh, the, the first one here uh, is just a generic inline. This has no edits. Uh, this is just showing a post can have multiple dogs, uh, and you can assign them. Uh, Django inline actions is uh, basically, so we, we, earlier we saw Django admin row actions, which lets you uh, change specific uh, items from the change list. This is sort of uh, another layer of inception from that, where you're now able to uh, edit, and, uh, edit and process things from the inline view, uh, since uh, Django admin row actions couldn't do that. So in this case, uh, you are, again, uh, just getting a link to all of, you know, it redirects to a, a, a different resource. Uh, and it's pr pretty easy to do. Uh, just, just for reference, you can also use Django inline actions in the change list. So this is kind of redundant with Django admin row actions, which I saw or showed earlier, but uh, it's good to know. Uh, another uh, admin feature that is, looks really handy, we haven't had an opportunity to use it at the Tribune, but I've always been interested in it, is Django nested admin. Uh, this is developed by our friends at the Atlantic, and it's basically inline inception. Uh, in this case, uh, you have a breed group, so that might be like uh, the toy dogs, and then uh, in each breed, or each breed group has multiple breeds, and then each breed has multiple dogs associated with that breed. This Django nested admin uh, allows you to put all three of those layers right in one view. So here, uh, you're able to edit everything about the breed group, everything about the breed, or anything about the dogs themselves. Uh, but one, and it also does sorting for you. That's a really handy feature. If you have orderable fields, you can set it as orderable uh, and then just drag and drop them. Uh, one warning is I would beware of over querying without prefetching, and I'm not entirely sure how that works under the hood for, uh, for Django Nested Admin, but just to beware of, uh, of doing too much with uh, it, because your view could get really, really slow. So I'm done with talking about packages. For now, I want to look a little bit at what we could do next, uh, sort of thinking about all of these together, all these different packages and ideas. Um, one thing that I found uh, is that basically all of them uh, are using this get URLs function from the admin. Get URLs is basically uh, from the Django docs, which just shows you can uh, add any views, any additional views to that model admin uh, on the fly. And uh, it's a really handy idea, and I'm pretty, it's pretty much what, how all of these different tools and mixins are using, uh, are, are working. Um, so we have started to fold more of our admin features into mixins using Git URLs, and specifically we are interested in how to do this with Ajax views. Uh, we, wanna, we wanna put a little bit more dynamic information and live updating information into our admin. Uh, that we, and we want to be able to do it so it, where it integrates nicely with the Django admin. In this case, uh, I believe this example, we are uh, putting in a preview of all the dogs that are currently trending. I'm not sure what, what they're trending, why they're trending. But, but, uh, but you might, you know, if you're a writer writing about dogs, you might want to know which dogs are trending so you know uh, who to write about. So in this case, uh, it, it basically, this get URLs function is just uh, sending anything that goes to the trending URL back to that trending function, uh, and that's where a lot of the work happens. Uh, here I happen to be using the do a dog serializer from Django REST framework uh, to actually create the dog response. You could do it in a million different ways. Um, and then the, uh, the JavaScript is, is, looks, it looks a little long, but it's really not very complicated. 
Uh, it's just uh, calling an API and updating a container uh, to, and th this is sort of what it ends up looking like. And so down here you'll see this is, this is just the change list view over here. Uh, but above it, you get uh, this Ajax driven little module that shows you three dogs that might be trending. If you click this button over here that says refresh suggestions, you get three different dogs or maybe the same dogs if they're still trendy. So this has gotten me thinking, like we're using this uh, Ajax view, uh, it's basically this JSON view, and Python had, and Django has this incredible framework for doing just that, Django REST framework. And I've been thinking about the best ways that we could be combining uh, the, all the powers of the Django, mo the Django model admins with all the powers of Django REST framework. So here I have the trending, I sort of changed this to the trending dog view instead of putting, uh, putting that view on the admin. And then here I made a new API view that uh, is basically getting, uh, it's, it's taking what was about a 10 line function and turning it into three lines and then also getting all the bells and whistles that, uh, that REST framework gives you on top of that. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a pretty handy pattern that we're interested in. Um, one step even farther that uh, I've been thinking about, we, uh, is, I mean, this one is basically moving the trending algorithm into a model manager that under, under the dog, uh, dog model and then uh, turning this into a view set, a full-on view set. I think, in, with, so with the right pagination, this functions exactly the same way as that 10 line, uh, that 10 line view did, uh, except it's all declarative, now there's no function really, and, and that feels like a better separation of concerns to put the trending into the manager as well. Uh, so this is, a, I feel like this is a really uh, promising start to something, but it has no way, for instance, to get into the detail view to receive the context that the model admin gets, at least the way that I, I set it up. Um, oh, and this is just to, to sort of finish that off. This, is the, this would be the get URLs for this, this view set. All you'd need to do is just add that trending uh, URL and call, it the, call that view, and then you're, then you're rolling. So yeah, I think there's something here, and all these libraries are kind of pointing to it, that uh, there's the combining model, the Django model admin and REST framework is something we're increasingly doing and we're curious, I feel like it's a very powerful combination uh, and we want to do more with it. The, uh, could, you know, is there a possibility, for instance, of getting full CRUD capability uh, on Django models uh, with Ajax views right in the admin with all the context and, and all the richness that the, mo the Django admin provides? Uh, I think some open questions with that that we aren't sure about. Uh, you know, how do you, you know, what's the best way to integrate with the router, uh, the router framework? What, uh, what, what are the best ways to integrate, to, to put the admin context into the API view sets? And uh, what's the best way to manage your front end assets, especially your JavaScript, your, uh, your CSS for uh, whatever you're doing with the Ajax? But more broadly, we want, we, you know, we want our, this feels, this feels like the right step to go. We want our admin to be an API client just like our website is, just like our external services are. Uh, it, it feels better architecturally, so we're, we're interested in how to work towards it, but we also don't necessarily want to build a custom whole Django admin, you know, separate admin from scratch, because we just don't have the, the team for that. Um, I think some of this is starting to beg the question of like, why would we stick with the admin at all? Um, and I kind of pointed to that a little bit, I, but, and I think one of the short answers is we have an eight-year-old website and it, it's a lot of built-up code and it would be really hard to, to do that, um, to, to, to basically offload the whole thing onto a, a whole new system. But the longer answer is that we're, there's a lot of promise in the Django admin. Uh, you, know, you get these things like versioning for free using Django reversion. You get things like locking with Django locking. Um, and the standardization in, in the community around that uh, just, just opens us up to a lot of uh, really interesting possibilities, especially with the directions that, that Django REST framework has been going. Um, so we're excited, we're sticking with the Django admin. Uh, we, we might end up, uh, as I said, we might end up standardizing it further uh, by putting it on something like Django CMS or Wagtail. But uh, that's the, we're just excited about the future possibilities on the Django admin and we think that uh, there's, there's more that could be done with it. Um, so I wanted to sh shout out to all of the repositories that I, and the packages that we used. Uh, here's links to them on GitHub. Um, and I think I, think I covered them all. And uh, to reiterate, this is NewsHound. Um, 
And uh, quickly, I'm going to show a demo just in case some of that was hard to see. Uh, here's the dashboard for Newshound. You've got breeds, dogs, posts, and breed groups. Uh, if you go into the posts admin, you'll suddenly get those trending dogs. I'm going to refresh. Oh, we've got uh, Chubb. Chubb is a oh, he's a very interesting combination of breeds here. Um, <laughs> these dogs are not real. Uh, Skittle. So I refresh it. Let's let's refresh it again. Let's just keep looking at dogs for a while, and then. Uh, but so down here, I'll show you a couple other features that we have in here. Uh, again, we have that view breeds button, so you can just go quickly see all the breeds. Uh, you can publish all your stories that are currently in edited mode. So right now, that's an edit. So if I publish this, I'm going to get that confirm view. And I click, and hey, it's published. And, uh, and now you see the publication status move to published. Uh, here's this uh, editable field here. So if I want to make it dogs, then uh, hit save, and it'll up update that. Um, if I click in here, you will again get the same preview. Um, and here you'll see uh, evidence of the inline action. So you can see all the breed groups that Kira, this dog Kira is part of. Kira is a hound. Um, I believe this is where we'll see the inline action. So this is going to, or the nested admin, this is going to load really slowly um, because I did not prefetch anything. But this is basically where you can edit pretty much the whole admin from one page. So that's why it takes a while. So all of this, oh, here we go. Uh, so here you have the hound. Uh, here's the first one. You've got the Afghan hound. We've got Harley. Harley is an Afghan hound, is 100% is Afghan hound. Uh, so you can start to change any of, those, any of these details straight here from the admin. Uh, and you know, this, it's all nested. So the next one down, for instance, is the American English coon hound. Keep going. Uh, so this is a really handy feature. So all of these combined, uh, are, this is all about uh, I, I think probably about 100, maybe 200 lines of code, and we really got a lot of features in, and uh, it feels like a nice separation of concerns. Um, and I'm going to stop there because I want time for questions and, and feedback. Uh, we're, again, not really all the way there. Uh, we have a lot of open questions, especially around how to integrate REST framework. So we want to hear more. <laughs>